All right, hey guys, um, we are going to look at solving exponential inequalities, which is very similar to solving uh, exponential equations. We're going to still work off the premise that our bases need to uh, be the same so that we can um, compare them and drop the bases then and then just um, and then perform the operations, all the algebra that we have to do. We'll perform that on the um, on the exponents basically. All right, so we're going to look at cases where we have inequalities with equal bases, and we're going to look at ca cases where we have um, inequalities with different bases, right? Um, and the big thing to remember here is very similar to um, normal solving of equations and inequalities. Um, it's all the same stuff, right? The only thing that's different is how the answers are represented, in, and our check step is going to look a little different. But other than that, it's kind of the same. So let's just let's dive in. So we've got this statement here that says exponential inequalities can be solved like exponential equations. Yep. Um, if b is greater than one, then you can operate off of this. If b to the x is greater than b to the y, then x, so your exponent, has to be larger than the exponent on the other one. And that makes sense, right? Because if I know that they have the same base, then the only way you can make it bigger is if that exponent is bigger on one than the other because it makes it a larger number, right? And similarly, if it's less than the other one, then that means its exponent must be less than the other one. So, uh, so let's uh, let's get started here. Um, a, a quick word of caution to remember that when you deal with inequalities, you have to flip the inequality symbol. You know, and, and I I actually say you got to. You got to turn it, right? You got to turn it the other way. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, okay? And so we will uh, we will come across that when we come across that. So here we go. We are going to um, solve this again like how we normally would. So we'll, uh, we'll put up a little fence here. Um, it looks like my bases are already the same, right? So if my bases are the same, that means I can basically operate as if the bases don't exist. Right, so I'm going to keep everything else exactly the same, except I'm not, you know, I'm not using the bases, right? So we have three minus two x is greater than negative four, right? And then we are going to go ahead and just do our problem solving thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I notice I have variables only on this one side. So I'm just going to leave these here. And then we'll take this number as a result and just ship it off over to the other side by doing the opposite. It's positive three, so we're going to add a negative three to both sides. Um, and when we do that, um, you get negative seven over here. That's negative four, and you go to the left another three units. That puts you at negative seven. And then you're left with negative two x here. Okay? And then now we are going to divide by negative two. And remember, when you divide, um, you know, both sides by a negative, right, that's when this kicks in. Right, so we got to turn that symbol around. So that's the first thing I'm going to do so I don't forget. My negative twos cancel each other out. You get x, and then my negatives over here cancel out. And we're just going to leave this as seven halves because that's a, a fraction in simplest form. Okay, and so now the next step is the, the thing that will look a little different is your check step, right? And so your check step is I want to see now you can put this number in here to see if it actually works, but it's going to give you a false statement. It's going to give you a statement that says that this has the exact same exponent as this has right here. So, um, but it will, it will tell you if you got the right answer. It'll tell you if you know if this is correct, right? So the way you can just check that really quick is just put seven halves in just the exponent part of it. And then just, sorry, I don't know what I'm doing here. So three minus two times seven halves. There we go. Brain is working, right? Make sure that is equal to that, right? And it is, right? Your twos cancel. You get three minus seven, which is negative four, is equal to negative four. And so it works out. So the way to check it to make sure it actually works out with the entire inequality, though, is read what it says. It says x has to be less than seven halves. So let's pick the easiest number we can think of that's smaller than seven halves and put it in this equation. And my go-to all the time with problems like this is, man, if you can use zero, use zero. Because zero is like the magic eraser. It just gets rid of things. 
and we like that. So here's what happens. When I put zero in here for x, it gets rid of this, and then I get a statement that says 5 thirds is greater than 5 to the negative fourths. Well, if you remember what a negative exponent does, right, 5 to the negative 4 is the same thing as saying 1 over 5 to the fourths, because it tells you you're going to kind of flip this, right? It says you're going to take this, make it into a fraction, and then flip that thing around. And 1 over 5 to the fourth is 1 625th. So this is a very, very small number. It's a positive number, but it's a small number. And 5 to the third is 125. So yes, it works. It's absolutely true. So you can box your answer and have some certainty about it being correct. And uh, yeah, so that's how these work, right? Um, in the next video, we are going to look at some examples with um, with the bases being different, all right? So it's kind of similar to, to what we've done in the past.